Yeah, don't press um, play. That'd be silly. Oh, no, 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 I can press play if I want. Just press play. What is that? Just push play. Um, Doesn't know. I feel like it's from some shit song. Probably. Ones. Or the name of an album by Moby or some shit. Just press play. No. It's the answer. It's from nothing. You fucking lying, you mug. Chris, you're going to start. Yeah, you're recording. Yeah. All right, okay. You're going to start. For approximately 22 Chris, Chris, years. Chris, yes. You're going to start. <laughs> I mean, I, kinda, I thought I had. Oh. The thing is, as well, I hadn't, yeah. me- I hadn't like messed up those four words. Well, how I'm ab- definitely going to mess mm. up approximately in a minute. Well, I'll be quiet then. For a- I'll be really quiet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll really try to be quiet. <laughs> For approximately 22 years, between 1984 and 2005, between 1984 and 2005, Ooh. sorry, we didn't jack the riff on here. <laughs> you mug. <London. laughs> For approximately 22 years, between 1984 and 2005, an unknown evil stalked the young girls of Ukraine. He seemingly swooped in, carried out his heinous acts and vanished, leaving nothing behind that could lead the police to him. He is the Poligovsky maniac, and this is episode two of Echo One. It's not. No, shit. 22. How did I mess up <laughs> that? Uh, everyone listening, uh, what Chris meant to say was, this is episode 22 of Echo On, a true crime podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Christian. And this is Echo One. A true podcast. Ah. Yeah, so you heard our wonderful, amazingly researched, and no, researched, fuck, I'll do that again. Jesus, that plays worse. (laughs) This is going so well. I know, this is our amazing, you you heard our amazingly rehearsed, no, you heard our amazingly rehearsed introduction. Uh, So what are we here to talk about? The Poligovsky Maniac. Poligovsky Maniac, a.k.a. Sir Guy, Sir, a.k.a. Sergey, Sir Sir a.k.a. Sir, Sir, Sir High, Sir, Sir He, to catch. To catch a killer. To catch a predator. To catch a killer. So we've seen loads of different pronunciations, well, like three or four. We have looked up YouTube videos where somebody has the same name and the narrator says, and this is either Sergey, or Sir Hey, or Sir... What was the other one? Sergey, Sergei, or Sergei, or Sergei. Yeah. Uh, we have got no fucking so, idea. So, um, we're going to just refer to him as Tkach. Well, actually, we'll be referred to him as... Every time. Uh, because it's funny. And he's a maniac. He's a maniac. Maniac. Right. So, yeah, the, the Poligoski Minute. The weird thing about this, uh, we've got we've got many episodes... Uh, well, according to Chris, we've only done one episode, but we've done many episodes. Yes, and they, we have had a wealth of material. Yes, like Fred and Rose West. Yeah, just so much to go on. Books to read. With this, uh, the only printed stuff I could find was literally uh, one, two, three, four pages in a book in... called Human Monsters Volume Four, and about five or six pages on the internet of the same stuff. Yeah. So like. You know, the obviously ones like Wikipedia, Murderpedia, things like that, that are pooling resources of everyone else. And none of them seem like official sources. It's like you can't, there's no like court transcripts, anything like that, no official words. So, yeah. and a lot of the information seems to be contradicting others or adding to it. And you're taking it as fact, but we don't know really how much is fact because there's no official yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's really difficult. And it's most of the facts, not most of the facts, most of the, I guess, facts, statements, data, information we found. Mm. It's consistent, but yeah. there's some inconsistencies and it's kind of difficult. And we'll, we'll probably mention a couple of them as we go. Yeah, so this um, we'll probably, to be fair, me and Christian will probably disagree about certain dates and numbers because it's. Um, we might fight naked. Yeah, so basically, mm. we're looking at um, Mr. Uh, the Poligoski Mr. Maniac. He was born on September the 12th, 1952, in the city of. Come on, try it. Come on, do it. Kisilyevsk. Kis- Kis- Kisilyovsk. Uh To all our Ukrainian listeners, I apologise. Well, this was in a blast in Russia. It was in a what? This was in Kemerova, a blast in Russia. He was born in Russia. He moved to Ukraine later. Okay, fine. Russians then. Anyway, so he was born in Russia in 1952. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he was he was quite a an able student, but kind of not really interested, was he, in school and things like that. He was... From what of, we can see, he was basically quite middle of the road that everyone thought he 
would be better. He'd be more yeah. intelligent. He'd be more engaged. But because of his lack of engagement, it just made him, you know, a C student. Yeah, it just did not much. Excel. Then he um he told his neighbours what he was living in um in Russia. He told his neighbours that he was a veteran of the Soviet oh, invasion yeah. in Afghanistan. And in re- however, in reality, he only did the compulsory military service in the Soviet army between seventy and seventy two. So he already lied just about something. Mm. He joined the police. And he was doing a forensic exhumations, apparently. I didn't really know that was one job. He had no. to exhume bodies, I guess. What's it? Would that just be bodies? It's just I would have, thing that says I would exhumations. Have, I would imagine so, because that's not what I found. That's, that, they said that it was a criminal investigator. That's oh, all, yeah. That's, no, all, that's all that I found. I didn't see the... But um, that, was his, that was his job as a criminal investigator. I think it was... Do- oh, right. I think basically he was a crime scene investigator. I think that's what yeah. it was, but they just... Uh, it was his one job within it. But... Unfortunately, though, in 1979, he was fired because he was trying to falsify evidence. He tried to falsify evidence and was uh, well, basically, <clears throat> I can't find out what it was, what no, he did. No, I can't see like what he falsified. But what I imagine it was is he had a problem with the police and the way things were done and the way uh, especially criminals work. They treated criminals. Um, and I think he was probably trying to blame someone for something, as in like that they oh, didn't do, but, tr- but maybe something that he did. Like, well, later on, we'll go into uh, his confession yeah, of yeah. how many people he said he killed. But if true, it would make more sense that he was trying to falsify evidence of putting ah, a murder scene that on That makes him. sense. You know, what? for some reason, I wasn't. I was approaching it from a different perspective. I was approaching it from what we know from researching um, Chikatilo. Chikatilo! And what we know about, um, like, Soviet police forces and stuff. Not being the best. Not being the best and being focused on um, sol- not sp- kind of solving, yeah. in air they quotes, murders. The, the... Having, a, having to have a um, having someone arrested and found guilty of it. I was approaching it actually mentally from that perspective and looking at the fact that was he just doing it because he needed to be seen to be solving crimes. Yeah, oh, it's very possible. They would have had, like... Uh... You know, they would have to reach a certain amount of numbers each month of clearing crimes. Yeah. Otherwise, they would be they'd face consequences. Yeah, they're seen as failure. Um, they were the Soviet government in that you mm. know, during that time. They were then, more they were more interested in clearance rates than actual yeah. truth. But then after that, between like for the next couple of years after he was fired, uh, he started doing odd jobs. Just to, basically, he had to get any job to get the rent. But then in through ni- his bowler hat, through his bowler hat, yeah. <laughs> and then in 1982. He upped and moved to the Ukraine, where the grass was green and the gold fell from the sky. Oh, like Victorian London. Like Victorian London! Um, but yeah, 1992, he moved to Ukraine, where he managed to get another job. Guess what he did? Was it... Was it... Odd jobs again? No. Was it... No. Was it... Um, I reckon it would be something away from people, <gasps> away from mm. having to maybe imp- try to... You know, um, mm. hold, uphold the law. I would nothing ah, like that. I would try think the, that. What you're thinking, exactly what you're thinking, yep. but then reverse it. Flip, reverse it. Join the police again. It wasn't a. Uh, I mean, you've got to think that. Have it right. I've been for job interviews. I've been waiting for a job interview earlier today. Now I know when you go for a job interview, there's one thing they do. You can bullshit your way through anything in the interview. At the end of the day, if they want you, they're going to ask for references. Mm. So this one, uh, can we have your references, uh, Mister? <laughs> Can you give us your references? And you'd be like, ah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, pff, I could. They're just, I just, mm, mm. oh, just, I think they're in my pocket. No, yeah. oh, no. I, uh, um, or did you bring up a, a little hand puppet from the desk and go, hello, I am his boss. He did very well. <laughs> don't know what that accent was. <laughs> and I don't know why he's all high pitched. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes, he was done. Um, but that, it was 1982, was. Well, it's two years after, maybe. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, where the killings started. The killings. Killings. Now, it, I remember reading, it was I can't think it was on uh, All That's Interesting uh, website, where it was their report of him. Yeah. And they used the phrase like, um, we don't know, we're not sure why <laughs> began <laughs> killing. Yep. Like, really? Like, I don't care what anyone says about the things that they have found out about all the uh, notorious killers. No one will 100% know for sure, for a fact, why they did it. They can say, oh, well, they did it, obviously, because they were abused as a kid, or this person reminded them of their mother, or they had an insatiable uh, sexual appetite to 
fuck a neck hole, whatever. No, no, that's all bullshit. Like, you can't, no one will ever know why a serial killer killed. No, I suppose that is true. I mean, but part of it, I guess, again, it depends the perspective because sometimes they'll say they killed because, and it can be from, what that is, it's like a process killer versus a, hmm. and it's like, did he kill because he wanted to kill or did he kill because it was a means to an end? He wanted the necrophilia. Yeah. And the only way to get to have sex with a body is because you need is to then kill a body. But then, if kill you want, a body, kill a person. But if, like, or is it, or to cover up the crimes, he yeah. doesn't want a witness. But let's put it like, if I was, I mean, he's known as a necrophile. He, um, spoiler alert. Yeah, well, not for them, it wasn't. <laughs> they didn't know about it. Um, ooh. but no, if I was a necrophile, what would I do? If. Would I go around killing people, or would I break into morgues? That's I'd, probably the easiest way. You feel like it would be easy. I wonder if it is. It probably isn't. They probably guard them very well. You probably do, like... You wouldn't want a grave rob because... So, uh, mm, I mean, look what happened with uh, Gein. Gein, I mean, yeah. you dig up there. It's just... You've got a face, really. You know, yeah, so. it's a bit much. But like... Because also... The, so, so um, <laughs> he focused on girls 8 to 18. Yeah, which is... So, if you're looking at it from a purely practical perspective, mm. which he quite possibly was, yeah. it's going to be much easier to overpower a young girl... Than, than break, down break into somewhere <laughs> and go in somewhere. Yeah, I mean things. I mean, I hate the fact that he's also known. He's known as the Polygovsky maniac. They say um, he's a necrophile that he has strangled and suffocated them. At no point do they call him a paedophile, which he fucking was. Yeah, that's true. Actually, isn't it? It's kind of um like literally one of the worst pedo killers. Yeah, they should have called him the Polygovsky paedophile. Yeah, in in, the, in this in well, this website I'm looking at. Um, it does say... Is it Wikipedia? Pro- no, it no. isn't. It's a different <laughs> one. It's a prolific Russian pedophilic, hebophilic... What's hebophilic? Ephebophilic and necrophilic serial killer rapist. What's a hebophilic? And one-time proxy killer. A what? A proxy killer. We'll get to that later with the um, um, arrests they made. Oh, uh, right. A hebophilic is a tra- adult sexual attraction towards pre- uh, pubescent children. That's literally a pedophile. Why are they giving me two different names? What is one? The um, attraction. The other one is the doing it. No, so um, he before it's to do with who have at least started puberty and have signs of adult sexual maturation, generally between 11 and 14. So a, a pedophile covers everything and a hebophile is like a more like just so like he's a, only, early, but you can only be one really. early puberty. You can only be one. Like it's a if it's a categorization of the other. You can't be both. He's it's just a pedophile yeah, because just a pedophile. he's covering everyone from eight to. Yeah. I mean, and what was the other one? A febophilic. Uh, and a febophile is someone who primarily is primarily attached, attracted to late or post adolescence or children who have oh, gone through puberty. Fuck off, he's a paedophile. This is bullshit. That article I looked at has a picture of um John Wayne Gacy next to it, <laughs> which I did, did not expect. But no, I know that um yeah. because of the laws in different countries that paedophilia in general for some countries might seem too strange that like a 17 year old can be deemed as a paedophile yeah as like a, in, as a, in as the a uk child. yeah the sexual um the age of sexual consent is 16 in the states yeah you have sex with a 16 or 17 year old it's either, they either do it it's statutory rape if it's, you're older if you're about the same age and then i suppose do they do but it's, with it's with a minor yeah it's sex with a minor it's not the scene the same as with a 13 year old necessarily so but they, it's sex with a so minor they wipe the coal off their face yeah. first so it's sex with a minor <laughs> So, so a lot of those things like um, Epstein and um, yeah. stuff like that, it's like 17-year-old girls in America. There is younger ones as well, but there's like photos of mm. um, Prince Andrew with a 17-year-old. But they class him with a, as a paedophile, even though he's there's no evidence that he... Like, there's no one lower than that. Like, is in... Or, yeah. I, I don't really know. That's I, a question. I don't know. But yeah, so but um, so if that is in the UK, it would be frowned upon to have like an old, an old mm. really old guy with a 16 or 17-year-old, but it wouldn't necessarily actually be illegal. Yeah, I mean, I do see, I do see the, um, the issues with... Like branding a lot of people, when you look at someone like Ian Watkins or Sergi to catch, and then you look at someone like Epstein. If the if really the youngest he was uh, with was uh, sixteen, seventeen, yeah, and like yes, they would all be labelled as paedophiles, but it's like I suppose the hemophilia and all that thing is a, a better class because then you yeah. can actually put a uh, better pun- more appropriate punishments. yeah yeah pr- yeah absolutely because someone like um Watkins if you're going after a newborn baby you're more men- you that is an insanity thing where you need to be mentally treated like no prison won't do shit for you no whereas if you're dealing with somebody who's um Epstein uh you either you know the either he's murdered in prison and they say he hung himself or uh you just give him a jail term because there's yeah, it's like that's not really a, it's not really a mental deficiency on his part. I, I he's just a criminal. We're going off like off the 
We can't um, have to, though. Path of it. No, 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 it's fine. But no, I was just going to say, but like, it's interesting with like with Epstein. I wonder how much of that is is a, a genuine attraction to younger looking girls mm. or younger looking women, like 15, 16, 17, or if it's just a just a power trip. I reckon. He well, to be fair, I just think he threw money at. Like, I don't think he procured the girls himself. Like, everyone can blame him as much as they want, and yes, he's a paedophile and a piece of shit. But for that, there is no way oh, he no, trolled for women. No, there's loads of middlemen that have, that oh, have got their fucking like, hands. Other hands people are, have got blood on their hands. Yeah. not actual blood on their hands because they didn't die. But yeah, absolutely, they're, they, they're complicit in it. Yeah, definitely. like there were so many people. His assistants. Oh yeah. Are as, yeah, I would say they were as guilty as him because they're the one that procured them for him. Well, you know, like you know, all around through. I know he's not Hollywood, but like all through Hollywood, there's assistants who know yeah i mean fucking hell brian singer's assistant should be fucking drawn drawn into court sorry whoever you are but you know your boss is a pedophile and you knew Um, and you still know and i know he hasn't been caught uh we'll get to that in the next episode (sighs) when i talk about some other pedophiles we should stop talking about pedophiles probably should but there's so many of them i mean really so many famous pedophiles so fucking right when you growing up when i was looking at like when i was you know i used to watch films and all that i I had no idea what, like, paedophilia wasn't a thing that was, like, talked about as a... Th- we didn't know the word. It was basically mm. that creepy old guy. Yeah, he's it, a was, kiddie it was kind of laughed about and talked in whispers yeah. and be like, oh, he's a bit creepy, isn't he? Yeah, and it's like, oh, look at him. He's touching that kid. Oh, you know, and even when I was a kid, we did that. Families at TV was doing that. And then, like, sort of mid-90s, suddenly it became a... Uh, paedophiles everywhere. And it's like, what? The fuck? I blame Gary Glitter. Oh, I blame fucking yeah. He, he started it. Well, you didn't start. The fuck were we talking about? Talking about so, the different the different stages of noncery. Yeah, so the different stages of noncery, as you say, is with him, it's when you're talking about between 8 and 18, you're crossing a boundary of um, attraction. Like, if you go after prepubescent girls... They wouldn't be 18. No, that's very different. So to... he's, I think his motivation was probably uh, partially, it was, I think it was obviously sexual. Sorry, I was, was having a problem with my microphone, if you can hear rustling. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was sexual, but I don't think it was his guiding thing. I think no, it was, I think he, he wanted a girl. Yeah, he, need, he needed a victim, a female victim. A weak victim. And an eight, an eight or nine year old is much easier. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's basically opportunity. I think he wanted a victim. That's the word I'm looking for. Didn't care about who old yeah. they were. No, I mean, well, we'll see that when we go through, because we don't know the details of many of his victims, but one of the victims we do know, we'll see that opportunity for him overruled any kind of common sense that he might have had about yeah. not getting caught. I mean, he also, um, like, over, during his free times while he was doing the nonsery and killing, uh, he was married three times, uh, fathered four children, and his f- co-workers and friends over the years that they spoke to about him all said... He, they had never witnessed him speak about women badly or treat women badly. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's because everyone he killed was a child. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, he's scared of women. And also, say he um, didn't speak badly to women, but he um, moaned about kids. Adults are just going to go, yeah, those damn children. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to find that weird <laughs> if, you, if you just, I mean. He's like, find... I like them. Like, oh, he yeah, yeah. kids, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those <laughs> Damn sexy kill children. Um, no, like if he was turning around and acting like Levi Belfield and was like cleaning out oh, the yeah. window of his car and calling them sluts, you'd be like, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's, I mean, no, but with Belfield, <laughs> it was totally hatred drove him. 100% yeah. it was just pure hatred made him do those things. With him, even the detectives, they came out and said they believe there was a sexual motive behind the attacks. Uh-huh. Mm. That's um mm-hmm. I also believe there was a murderous motive. I think there was a there was a <laughs> there was some kind of stabby Yes, some kind of stabby strangling strangly motive. <laughs> but um we've, <laughs> we've got like have you got a timeline of those he killed that we know of? I have. Um I'm just trying to find it. I mean, it's quite wanna, exhaustive because I've got two. We haven't got the full list of people he's accused of. No, we've got all the accused and convicted uh, names, I believe. Um I could not find them. So I've got like nine victims, 1980 to August 2005, killed at least 37. Um, known ones are unspecified date in 1980, Simferopol, Crimea. I think, unnamed this, is a, young I think this one, this unnamed young woman, I think this is the one where we should probably expound on more because I think yeah. it's like, a, it really is a good starting point for watching the progression of what he did. Even though we don't know many details about a lot yeah. of them, the fact that he had drunk several bottles of wine that night 
and he were pr- he wanted to have sex in the, I know, the when woods. I, I know, yeah, I know that when I've drunk several bottles of wine, I want to go and have sex. Look, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm after several bottles of wine, I can get an erection just like, just that. like that. He said, drunk several bottles of wine, and it was a former schoolmate, apparently. Yeah. This is what he says. Um, that uh, he'd been seeing her intermittently for the part of the nine yeah. years previously. Um, but then he... So if he'd been seeing her nine years previously and they were having sex and all that stuff, and then he proposed to have sex in the woods woods or the country or something, something you know, wherever it was, and then she, apparently she slapped him. So what did he do? Grabbed her and raped her, strangled her out of fear that she would escape and report him. That is I not like... I know this is the story that basically he was caught for other killings and they were piecing together what they said. And this was the one he said was his first. But the story makes little sense. Like, A... Drinking more than a bottle of wine and being able to do anything is even hardened drinkers would have a problem with that. Um, then they've been having sex for nine years, but she slapped him at the thought of having sex with him. Yeah, I know. It sounds to me as like if it did happen, he's he's tight. He's made it a lot like a neater, like a much neater package of yeah. story. When in fact, probably what's happened, he's probably like got fucking ag- sexually aggressive with her and like take, maybe taken her out to the woods, hmm. like forced himself upon her while he's absolutely hammered. She's having none of it. She hasn't just slapped him. She's probably been like kicking him off yeah, and like trying to push him off and everything like that. And um, and it's he's just like his rage has increased and increased, and he's like lost it. He's flipped mm. his shit and strangled her. Like I can see that happening. You know, yeah. you know what I mean, it's it's a it's an escalation of an argument where he's already been drunk and yeah. sexually aggressive towards her. I'd be asleep. And that, well, yeah. And also, I th- I think he's bigged himself up by saying I drunk like, oh yeah, yeah, mate, I drunk like six bottles of wine. <laughs> And, like and a, it was fucking. He's like a sixteen-year-old chaff. Yeah, yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah. I drank six bottles of wine. Then a fucking white lining. Oh, fucking yeah, yeah. And boy, oh, 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 oh. So the next, the next um, person I have, it says unspecified date after 1982. So that's nice and specific. Nice, nice. Um, Thank you, Russia. Zaporizhia, Ukraine. Unnamed victim. Oh wait, that's because he moved to the Ukraine. Yeah. In 82. Okay. Yes. So sorry. So 1980, the alleged first victim was in Crimea. Crimea, and then he moved to Ukraine in 82. Hmm. And sometime after 1982, um, in uh, Zaporizhia, Ukraine, an unnamed victim, and they framed Vitaly Cairo for the murder. This is a this is a reoccurring theme here that we're going to get to is the framing of of various different people, and this is a hundred percent down to I wouldn't say Russian police incompetence. I would say the Soviet. Uh, attitude towards policing and the yeah. pressure they were under that they had to catch someone or they would pay the price for it. Um, not that they wouldn't kill them, but, you know, they'd probably be moved to Siberia or some shit like that. Um, so they had to catch, find uh, a killer because murder doesn't happen in Mother Russia. No, no, that only happens in the decadent West. Uh-huh. So this is the first one that we know of in the... <laughs> Sorry, you... that, that isn't me, that's Echo, our dog. Oh. Can't eat. So I just wanted to bring her up and say hello. So I carry on. Talk about murders to our dog. So this is the um, so yeah, this is the first person we know in the Ukraine if, when he moved to Ukraine, and the first framing that we know where they framed another person. We'll talk about some of the framings after, I think. Yeah. The next one we have unspecified date and location in 1981, 1989. Sorry, Olga Svetlitsky. Not, I love your pronunciation. It's really good, isn't it? Yeah. Age nine. Oh, for fuck's sake! I mean, framed. I her know far- they were young, but. Framed her father, Vladimir, for the murder. Ugh. Unspecified date and location in 1997. Unnamed victim. Framed Igor Rizkov for the murder. <laughs> Unspecified date in 2000. Dnepropetrovsk in Ukraine. Um, September 23rd, 2002. Zaporizhia, Ukraine. Um, Jana Popovich, nine. Framed her cousin, Jacob, for the murder. Oh, that was the kid. But the, that cousin was a child, wasn't he? he yeah. Was himself. So, yeah. Yes. Unspecified date and location in 2004, Svetlana Starostina, 17, framed um, Maxim Dmitrienko for the murder. August 2005, Zaporizhia, Ukraine, Katya, 9, surname unrevealed, attempted to frame her father for the murder. Um, so, but no, there's a note on this as well. Also killed numerous other victims, though her final body count is unknown. From 1980... Get ready for this number. From yep. 1980 to 2005, he's uh-huh. estimated to have killed more than 100 victims in total. Uh, thing is, this this is 
from when they charged him um, and they, then he suddenly started offering up all these yeah. uh, pickers. Basically, they charged him. We'll talk about in a minute the actual how he got caught and all that. But, but this part, when they charged, he started confessing, saying, oh, I did a lot more than that and said 100, but didn't give actual details. He gave details about all the ones that they had, yeah. but not about those, apart from the one beforehand, which was the first one in 1980, but still quite vague. All right, he saw her for nine years and they don't know her name. No, it's really interesting, isn't it? So yeah, they they, they said they were on and off, on again, off again, kind of lovers or whatever for mm. nine years. There's no, we don't have any details of her name. He states that he had drunk several bottles of wine, went out to the woods, as we said before, wanted to have sex with her. She slapped him. So he strangled her, as you do. As you do, yeah. But so I, I was thinking about this and I was thinking like maybe... So if we if we assume first of all we assume it did happen, mm. I'm sure it wasn't as as clear as like let's go have some nookie in the woods, <laughs> and she went no and slapped him in, so he killed her. I'm sure he was drunk. Also, I bet he didn't drink several bottles of wine. I bet he was showing off to the police saying he. Unless oh, it was seven of the little uh, oh, mini bottles he had in hotels. Yeah, yeah. So he, he literally just, had a glass he, and a half. He raised he raided the mini bar <laughs> at the, like Hilton <laughs> Moscow or something. Because that's where he stays. Yeah, and then he um then he. He says that she slapped him, and he, so he killed her. I'm sure he was a drunk arsehole, was being really sexually aggressive towards her, forcing himself upon her and stuff. Mm. She was fighting him off and fighting him off, and he was just a drunk, angry little turd. Lost his shit and strangled her, <laughs> and just fucking dumped her body. Because then he says that he phoned the police. Oh, uh, yeah, but then... And he, they didn't answer. He got irritated because they were... The, oh, no, he, uh, the, the officer eventually answered, but he got uh, he got irritated because the officer at the end of the phone refused to identify himself. Oh, that was it, yeah. So then he hung up. He wouldn't tell... He would, the police wouldn't tell him who, who to catch was talking to, so to catch got the hump and hung up and was like, nah. I'm done. That's it. I'm, I'm a killer now. Yeah, that's it. I've got bloodlust. I've got <laughs> thirst for blood. Well, it's like um, the... When he, t- he talks about uh, his r- reasons for doing things, and it's like, I took revenge on the cops because they don't work. They don't work. It's like, um, no, that isn't. Kill a cop mm. then. If you're gonna, if you're against, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you hate something that much, don't kill innocent kids. Kill what no. you're after. No, don't yeah. kill anyone. Don't you? No, 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 don't. Yeah, we're not. But that makes no sense. He had, he had like various three though. He also said, wasn't it? It was. A, a, I think another time he said it was like against the women who had who wronged him. Who had wronged yeah. him and rebuked him earlier on in his life and well stuff he was known like, no, like even though uh, we said that his friends said oh yeah he's never said a bad word against women blah 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 his ex-wives they all divorced him because yes. he, they, he, he was violent towards yeah them. absolutely that's what I found that interesting he, as was, well. a, he was, like, was a drunkard and was violent he was a violent drunkard yeah. and then he violently drunkardly murdered someone someone yeah so um, yeah, and all that's... the murders, unfortunately, because of I mean, I'm sure they are, obviously in Russia they know exactly the names and dates and everything. But what the news that comes over here is few and far between. But we do know that uh, in 2005, in August, uh, Tkach grabbed a nine-year-old girl called Katya, who was the daughter of one of his friends. Yeah, one uh, of his friends. Which this is, is the... what we mentioned. I mentioned before was like, um, about he did the one. He did. The... He did. He wasn't worried about. Um, at, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? He was. The ease of a victim overtook yeah. his self-preservation. Yeah. I mean, also like the, the like serial killer one hundred and one. Don't kill someone you know or a friend of someone you know. Yeah, if you want like, to get away with a bunch of murders, don't keep it so yeah. close to home. But yeah, so basically, what he did was he grabbed this girl, poor little girl called Katia, who was nine, and uh, she was at the time playing with other with four other children. Um, so he basically uh, ripped her away and did the unspeakable and ended her life in the most hideous way. And then what did the absolute stupid fucktard do? He turned up at the fucking funeral. Where her friends were, who all identified him. Told their parents, who told the police, yep. who went and knocked on his door. And being the utter fucktard as well, um, he took jewellery and makeup accessories yeah. as uh, trophies from his victims. And kept them all. So when they uh, raided his house, um, yeah, they found it all. But even yeah. though they did that, they found him. They banged on the rights. They uh, knew they linked up the victim, the jewelry to unsolved cases. Yeah, he confessed to thirty. He almost of instantly them. confessed, didn't he, to loads yeah. of them? He- but then he was saying, oh, "I've done over a hundred, but wasn't he, he knew enough about the thirty-seven, like how how tall they were, where they were buried. But yeah, the other ones that he claimed to do." Didn't know that much about yeah. it. It's like flights of fancy stories. Like drunk, yeah. I drank a million bottles of wine and, and I killed a thousand <laughs> women yes. with a mighty erection. I oh yes, yeah, so mighty. Was... Why does he sound like it? I had a mighty <laughs> erection. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so he was slightly going, I think, I personally think, yes, it was 30-something. They know he did that. Yeah. This 100 number is... No, I think he was just trying to be Billy Big Bollocks, wasn't he? Yeah. And it's, um, it was like, chickatilla who? Fuck that guy. 52. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's also this one time that he talked about wanting to be the biggest serial killer. Yeah. Which they all seem to have. Yeah. Like, so he um, like just, the, the probably just fucking killer. lied about his... Yeah. He did the same. He yep. wanted to be, uh, be, the, be the biggest... He's Russian as well, isn't yeah. he? Um, but yeah, so it's, which is a strange one. But then also for the 37, um, we talked about this um, before the episode started about the he was... Uh, one killed by proxy. Yeah, by proxy. And I asked him what that meant, and so it's really fascinating. What that means. So uh, this, we'll go back to one. So in uh, 1989, Olga, um, I think is it this one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Olga, um, Fetchlichny nine. Uh, he killed her. It's great pronunciation. And then he framed. I think I did okay. And he framed her father, Vladimir, for the murder, and he was found guilty and spent time in prison. So he was. This was 1989. This happened. In t- in the year two thousand, yeah. so like twenty one year no eleven right. years later, <laughs> sorry, Math fail. Yeah, eleven years later, Vladimir Shlechnik, oh, fuck's sake, Vladimir, Vladimir, the father of the nine year old victim Olga, um, killed himself by hanging um in prison. So that he's he goes down as a as a victim of um to catches because it's a uh, by proxy because proxy, yeah. he framed him. But this poor sod. He'd spent like a decade in prison, being known as the a, a being known kid. as killing his nine-year-old daughter, and finally hung himself in prison. You think that, uh, like, being accused of something you haven't done, if enough people say you've done it, do you start to doubt that you're you're insane? Yeah, and I think bet I might have done it. Maybe, yeah. Which is especially in the conditions and he would have been in. Those absolutely, would have been awful, and he would have felt guilty anyway. He already felt mm. he probably already felt like he'd let his daughter down, but yeah. So that's like a murder by proxy. But it's un. It's just like so awful. But also, the, the, when he committed suicide, he was still awaiting trial. He was awaiting trial for that long. A decade yeah. like, in kind of jail, effectively, because you're not, not even found guilty of anything. Mm. I mean, but then they, they jailed up to, in total, they think about just up to 10 men yeah. for, the, for these 37 murders. Um, and But even when they knew for a fact a catch had done them, and after he was convicted, some of them... It was a few years before they were yeah. released. Like, they guy, didn't want to admit. Maxim Dimitrenko, um, Dimitrenko, Maxim Dimitrenko, he served seven years in prison for a murder that he didn't mm. commit. Um, and he still had to, he's one of six. So on this article, it says one of six people, but I heard more mm. that were wrongly, um, wrongly convicted of the murders. And he remained in prison six years after Takach confessed. That's like, so he served seven years in prison, and he served six of those. What after Takach had confessed to the killing that he had? I mean, I get that there's uh, the Russian penal system at the time, the Ukrainian penal system at the time wouldn't necessarily be, uh, you know, have all the mod cons or anything. But you think when somebody's been found to have done something wrong, yeah. you clear your mess up. And also, I totally get that you don't just take the con- the confession. No, but you take the conviction. You take the conviction though. Yeah. The confession go no, we need to keep the other guy in prison. He could just be a um, talking yeah. shit. But as soon as they convict convict him of it, you've just got to quash that. But he served, yeah, six extra years. Hmm. Oh, there's um, one good thing. Like uh, we're talking about his motivations again. They say they're because uh, he claims one of the uh, on at the trial anyway that he felt an intense hatred for him because of the way his wives had treated him. But um, they a lot of the investigators say he never showed signs of any misogyny. Um, which uh, we talked about that earlier on about like him say like the them saying he's never said anything bad about women or anything. Um, but then making it, saying it's all about women, but then saying it's all about... Um, the police. The police. Uh, he didn't know in his own mind what he was nah, doing. He I just, think. he was. I think he was trying to justify a reason for why he got yeah. had an urge to do these acts. I mean, he did, during his forensic knowledge came in fucking useful. Yeah, we'll um, talk about that in a second, actually. We'll talk about how we got away with it for so long, won't we? Yeah. We'll I was just going to say, actually, I had a little bit more to add for this this one innocent oh, yeah. man, this, um, what was he, Maxim? Uh, yeah, Maxim. So he 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 was he was arrested on so on September the 29th in 2004. Max, uh, Maxim was drinking beer in a local bar in um, eastern Ukraine mm. um, on the night, uh, in the night of the body of a girl, um, Svetlana uh, Starostina was found nearby. The 17-year-old had been raped and murdered. The next day, uh, Dimitrenko um, was arrested along with another man. 
But apparently, so they arrested two guys. Mm. Apparently, the second suspect had a heart attack um, after questioning and was taken to the hospital. So Maxim was the only one left. Oh, so they just had so to... they just picked him. Oh, that makes sense. So they didn't like the other guy who was also not guilty of it. Just yeah. he had a heart attack. So I got to just let him go get away, and they just thought we'll just do this. And they said they, he says that um they forced confession from him. Mm. Um. He said, they did not have to beat you hard as they had other means. One of them put a gas mask on my face and didn't let me take it off for days. Oh, Jesus. I've, I've put a gas mask on. I was like, oh, what's this like? Put it on like after five seconds and they go, oh, I can't do this anymore. He said that he, they, this is quote, then they brought me to a prosecutor who asked me if I did it. I said no, which was my big mistake as the police took me back to myself for more torture, more torture until I told the prosecutor that I did it. He was sentenced to 13 years for the rape and murder of Starostina. Fucking hell. Wait a minute, um, only 13 years? Yeah, I know. You feel, I feel oh, like... Well, this is going to be in a hard, hard... It's not like a, you're oh, not going to like Belmarsh or anything. No. This is a, but a lot I, harder. But I wonder as well, like, I feel like maybe they knew that he didn't do it, so they didn't hmm. give him life. They just gave him 13 years and we say we found yeah. someone. Maybe, yeah. So later that year, <laughs> so literally the same year that hmm. he was found guilty, but they refused to send Dimitrenko's case back to investigators before eventually agreeing in 2008. So it took three years for them to even... Yeah. Take put it back to be reviewed, so and then had to wait more than three years on from that to and be again, released. For all we know, I mean, this Maxim guy could have been a piece of shit anyway. Oh yeah, maybe and he could but... have been like they're going. We don't want to let him out, or he could have done stuff in prison that he's being punished for. He could have uh, beat up other prisoners, tried to escape, and broke the rules, so they had to keep him there for a few more years. That's the thing. We've got such little information. All we know is, oh, it took that many years. And yeah. we can be all up in arms going, this is not right. How could they do this? We haven't got the facts, <laughs> unfortunately. I've got another. Li- I've got some more names here as well. Oh, cool. So, uh, oh, no, cool. Literally the opposite. Vit- yeah, Vitaly Kira. Vitaly K- uh, K- uh, Kira. Kaira. I don't know. Vitaly was jailed for five years. Mikola Demchuk for five years. Uh, Yakiv Popovich, then 14 years old, was jailed for eight years. Mikhailo Marasenko for three years. And Sergei uh, Koshum for 15 years, and they've all of those have since been released. Like too little, too as well as that um, Vladimir, who was detained for raping and killing yeah. his daughter, hanged himself in his cell before his trial, and <laughs> was later convicted of that rape and murder as well. Prosecutor Shader said these people were all tortured and forced to confess the crimes they did not commit. It's still an ongoing thing as well. They're trying to get the Ukrainian justice system to try and give some kind of compensation, which they don't want to do. Yeah. Or they they or they say that they're entitled to it, but just never give it to them. <laughs> well, yeah. So then, uh, should we go over how he got away? Yeah. With how it? did he get away? So we're looking twenty twenty two years, mm. thirty seven plus victims, framed people. How did uh, he get away with it? Well, he was basically. We've got to think. He wasn't. He was twenty eight when the first murder in nineteen eighty happened. Yeah. He wasn't an old guy or anything. Uh, he was a young police officer yep. at the time. He'd already been fired for being a police officer once. So by the time mm. he got the second job in uh, Ukraine as a police officer, he was only 28. Yeah. So it was early 20s. He was already tried falsifying evidence and yeah. learning stuff. Um, well, basically, he d- d- he took their bodies. Instead of uh, burying them, destroying them, he left them near like busy highways or railway tracks yes. to make it look like a transient or somebody yeah. while traveling had killed yeah. them. Uh, which is literally a transient, re- but it made yeah. him realise that it was like a homeless person. I meant. Um, but yeah, so I think that's really interesting. It straight away brings it away from anyone local mm. to the area and more of someone passing through. Well, so you're not looking necessarily at the local community. Yeah, I mean, when he left them by the... But the police, when they left them, found the body by the roadside, they automatically assumed it was a trucker, most likely. Yes. Uh, when they found a body near railway tracks, they thought it was a businessman travelling yeah. back from uh, another city. Yeah. Uh, because bear in mind that even back in the 80s in Ukraine... It's not like a massive amount of tourism or... Oh, no, like absolutely. That. It would have been closed off to the West, so it would have been just other, like, Russian yeah. Republic people from the uh, various... But he Russian also, Republics. I mean, his his work on the forensics, I don't know how... Like, people are, I think, giving him credit, like, too much. Like, because yeah, it's not like he was a... Like, he said that, oh, he cleared up with a vacuum sometimes. I mean, he's no Dexter. No, but there's, like, I read that he cleaned up with a vacuum yeah. uh, some of his, uh, the hairs he left. It's like, yeah. what vacuum? What, where? Where, where would he get a vacuum from? Like these are people are like by the roadside. I don't know. Did he plug it into his lighter? Yeah, car, maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um, but then he also um, like doused their bodies in uh, like cheap perfume, put it around the area to cover his scents. Yeah. Another um, thing I found really interesting was he would choose like was it roads or things that had just been freshly laid with new tar. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, because it was fresh, it had a really strong smell. It took the put the um scent dogs off. Yeah. Didn't it? And they couldn't track his smell, which is like just incredible. Like. 
I've not seen from all the things we've read. I've actually I've not that seen a serial thing, killer yeah. that's has gone to those lengths to do mm. to do those things. He also like cleaned up semen from the crime scenes and things like that. But it's apparently. like that. I mean, to be fair, they we don't know how he did it. It could have been as simple as he had a bottle of bleach. And yeah, probably. That's, to be fair, I doubt he's <laughs> going to be there cleaning the site like meticulously. So it's going to be oh, literally. Yeah. He's going to be throwing like bleach everywhere. I bet he just... didn't have his own little bottle of like vinegar and bicarb. No, he has like in a little spray a little, bottle, a little like toothbrush a... to just yeah. do some, uh, a little hand vacuum. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a little dirt devil <laughs> or whatever it was. <laughs> That's him. Um, but yeah, so um, that was the kind of things he did. But then when you actually look at the profile of him, uh, which I'll read out the profile now, which is um, they said it was a he's an organized, meticulous, and more importantly, a merciless narcissist with uh, strong egocentric behavior. Uh, a cold heart, resentment, and an, ab- uh, an inability to maintain long-term relationships, and an eagerness for revenge. Uh, according to the psychologist in the case, uh, he to catch also had severe anger problems. Uh, he suffered from intense irritability and was extremely aggressive. Um, to the detectives who were on the case, uh, he was a sexually motivated psychopath who savoured the fame he was receiving from his serial killings, which makes sense and feeds into the fact that he would start saying he did more. He yeah. would start making, you know, I drank a thousand bottles of wine yes. and with my mighty erection, bat someone's death with it. You know? <laughs> my mighty erection. <laughs> uh, it's like... It's... He, um, you know what we didn't actually talk about, which is horrible, but we didn't actually talk about his... how he did what he did. Like his actual... His MO. MO or as... We talked about his MO in... Uh, loose terms. But, but we right, didn't talk about let's... specifically what he did because I think that was also truly horrifying but also kind of interesting because yeah, he wasn't well, go on to it. he didn't butcher people with knives he wasn't he wasn't chickadillo no he wasn't um, chickadillo yes chickadillo. Chickadillo. he would um put pressure on the carotid artery mm. so like a I guess probably like a sleeper hold like a reanimation choke yeah. something like that cuts off the blood to the brain so he would do that until they die so they fall asleep and then they die so there wasn't blood he didn't have blood everywhere but he would often rape the the girl Either before and or after the act. Yeah. So he was a paedophile and a necrophile. So, I mean, he was an evil piece of shit. It's just but horrible. The, the only thing we can, like, you know, I suppose get some respite of comfort in is that some of these victims weren't at the hands of someone like Chickatillo and being butchered. They died and it's as yeah. horrible. It would have been but scary. But they wouldn't have felt the pain yeah, that, they, of, they, of what Chickatillo did to some people. Yeah, like, from, it's a horrible thing to try and. From my experience of get, being going unconscious from a carotid heart, my carotid artery being blocked and no yeah. blood going to my brain, it doesn't hurt. It's weird. You just feel a bit lightheaded. He's not it. joking. He literally. He was, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it happened. Yeah, yeah. I was competing in a competition. It yeah, didn't you didn't in just the street. street yeah. It wasn't weird, and I didn't have like a strangle wank or anything. Um, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was a competition, and uh, yeah, competition. I got tri- I got triangle choked, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, I won. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so you basically. But yeah, just I just literally I felt like woozy. I mean, it's happened a couple of times. I f- you feel a bit like lightheaded, and it feels a bit weird. And then I just woke up, hmm. I, like w- I, with an undetermined amount of time after, just kind of woke up again. But I kind so of if you I just hope keep doing that it, that happened to his victims. I hope yeah. that, like, I don't know if how much we know, like how they like because with the little information, people say oh, he raped some of the girls before and after. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much of what the the amount of that is, but I hope none of them were before and they just had a sleep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's kind of kind of got to do to yourself to try and make it slightly more palatable to read. I mean, and to be fair, understand. this one was a lot more palatable because of the lack of information. If we had the detail that we had on like Chikatilo, no, I don't think it would have been done fucking sickening. I think we would have chosen it, read it, and decided not to do it. Yeah. We've done that on some other cases. I mean, yeah, with Chikatilo, we can sit there and go, right, we know it. We we know we've done it. We've covered one disgusting pedo like butcher yep this one it's different because it's not necessarily the crimes that we're focusing on but the fact that he did like he people were framed for it like this yeah this was this is less of a i suppose a a theatrical one as chikatilo was that the fact that yes he did it for a long many years yes he got away with it for many years but the fact he was a detective that he used some very basic methods yeah to get away with it and worked and if he just didn't kill the friend's kid. If he had nicked his friend's kid and then gone to the funeral. They would never have caught him. No. Um, I've got a stupid picture of his stupid face on my laptop as well. It's getting on my tits looking at it. Just move it away. Stupid dick. I just have. It's just 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 I look down again. I was like, oh. But then we've got, um, uh, I recommend everyone watch uh, Inside the World's Toughest Prison episode on uh, 
uh, what's it, Netflix. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what episode it is. Is it four? Two, oh. one. Whichever episode, we'll tell you in a second. Um, basically, it's uh, this guy goes to prisons all over the world and then just looks how awful they are and then basically meets some of the prisons. This one, he goes to uh, his prison and just talks about the Ukraine, the history of it. It's really interesting to see the backdrop of like what's what's happened and what he did. Um, and like where he, more likely where he was afterwards and the kind of the desperation that especially now the people who are running the prison feel because they're understaffed, they're working in old locations that are just Yeah, fucked. you look at the state of the prison. It's just, it's awful. It's, uh, sorry, so it's season two, episode two. Yeah, so definitely watch, Ukraine. even if you don't want to rest, watch that because halfway through, after he's going through, this is the jail, this is how horrible it is, he interviews. A little old man in his, um, in a little cell, in a yeah. little, little, old school and bars he he comes across as at first just polite and respectful like i'm being interviewed fine um but then just comes across as a dick yeah what do but not by doing anything by being a no dick. just by just, just by like an aura his mannerism of, an aura of a penile aura yeah <laughs> and the way that <laughs> the way his um like the, he was in the news in all over the world actually uh at 16 years old a woman now uh was called Elena. We don't know what her first name was, but now she's uh, Elena. She was then the perfect age to be one of his victims. What a catch. Oh. And instead, uh, she found him in jail, went to visit him, and they married. Huh. Not only that, because when they married, they were allowed, was it like a day? We said, this is actually in the program. They were allowed yeah. a day. No, it was month, It was like three days um, every two months or two days every three months. And this is in 2015... Um, they basically met and every sort of few days a month got to spend their day in like this little apartment in oh. this prison and do what they wanted. And there were sharp knives there. There was a full, it was a full apartment. It's part of the, in the Ukrainian uh, system, they were allowed um, uh, prisoners oh. without conjugal visits. It's um, part of their kind of human rights. Yeah, I mean, she and was basically said she was captivated by the media coverage of the trial and following it. And she followed it closely of when he was arrested. So that's quite a few years. Um and she said, "I'm not scared by his conviction. It's good that men and it's good that women are scared of him. If that's the case, there's less competition for me." But then you watch oh, that. Watch I watch the program just for her. Yeah, she is fucking terrifying. I read a, I read a um an article about that um about that TV show about the World's yeah. Toughest Prisons as well. And apparently, she is fiercely um kind of insecure about having any other women look at him. And they said when they when they arranged for the film crew to come in and interview mm. her, um, or her here, uh, um, she she had demanded that there was no women in the crew were allowed in because no women could look at him, and she basically said that if anyone l- looks at her, looks at him kind of the wrong yeah. way, that she would be the one in prison. Fuck it, but she's, I know she said that she would have helped him bury the bodies if he had asked at the yeah. time if they knew each other, um, and but then in late 2016. Uh, oh yeah, they married two. That's fifteen. They had a daughter. Yes. Um, but <laughs> didn't ever meet her. Yeah, good. Um, but then, uh, so then by her this... family like blocked because she lives in Russia. She lived. She lived in Russia still. Yeah. And the family went to the Russian government and that, so they wouldn't let her take the child out of Russia. Mm. So that's why they never was allowed to visit. Which is kind of. But then, like, as of um, 2016, uh, she now that she had a kid, Elena was trying to secure an early release for her husband claiming that they hope to live out the rest of their lives yeah. in Eastern Russia. Um, you know, it's a, a nice happy ending for them. Yeah, she was like, um, yes, you know, he killed a bunch of people, but he's old now and we're, we're in and love. We've got a family. We've got a family, so he should just come home and be fine. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we'll let him out. Of course they did not do that. No. And like she, I like, like one of her kind of things as well is the fact that like, you know, I know he did bad, but he's never done anything wrong to me, basically. And you're just like, that. that's not a thing. What the fuck is wrong with you? That's... <laughs> <laughs> with his stupid little red alcoholic looking nose oh fucking hell uh, but at least he had a mighty erection it's difficult doing a like a where are they now uh, who where d- is he now in the ground dead he done died he, he done died so her plans Elena's plans were qu- absolutely ruins yeah because he, unfortunately he died in was it November of 2018 yep and he died of a heart, heart attack, attack and I hope it was a fucking long one he was only 66 as well yeah he looks he looked kind of old he looked old well the thing is is that like uh, Chikatilo they did exactly the same like Chikatilo 
before the trial and catch before the trial were just like graying haired guys who just had gray hair. That was really the only age. They didn't look too old. Yeah. But because they in the Ukraine, they put them in a cage and shaved their heads because yeah. of the lice, they looked fucking just awful. Yeah. I mean, t- t- and obviously, looked worse. And the, obviously the food's not good, so they lose weight and they're all like skinny and haggard and fuck them. Yeah. I mean, I am so fucking glad he's dead. Um, yes. It was, I found it really weird that before we started doing Echo On, I thought I at least heard of all the big hitters. What this has shown me is yeah. well, there were so, so many worse ones than what you think. If you think Dharma, if you think Gacy, if you think BTK are the worst there is, you are in for a big fucking shock. Because, yeah, they might not, we might not have the photographic evidence of, say, Dharma's killings. No, yeah, we don't, nec- we don't necessarily have like a fridge with a head in it. No, but, but we the, have the details of some of the things. And so this one that we're doing now, like. <laughs> He only died at the end of 2018, so we're recording this now in October 2019, so it's been less than a year since he died. Mm. I reckon, I wouldn't be surprised if as time goes on, more information comes out and there'll be be books and movies, documentaries, whatever about him, because it's such an intriguing case. But as it is, doing this uh, this, um, episode, it's been more challenging to find information, but I'm glad, in a way, Mm. that I don't have certain specifics but, um, in my brain. I will actually uh, go on to say um, something like, I one of the books I read, the one I mentioned earlier on, Human Monsters. Who's that by? Uh, Robert Keller. It uh, confused me because all the others we found, they said he was done for 37 counts. Right? Yes, yeah, 37 uh, is the number I've seen everywhere. In this one, it says he was convicted of 29 counts of murder and 11 of attempted murder. That doesn't even make 37. It, makes it doesn't make 37, 40. but also... Who got away? No, I know. That's what I mean. I would have thought that if it would have been... I mean, if it was 11 proxies, but it wasn't. It, it they wasn't. It was one. And so either this is... I would think that those figures would add up to 37 and it was a miss... Yeah. Like, just... Unless this is basically either going off uh, Russian information that is not sourced because there's no more information than that. Yeah. Or it's um, bullshit. I hate to say it. I mean, a lot of these things that you'll find uh, discrepancies in a lot of these uh, reportings, and it's mainly the numbers. Yeah, it's difficult. I guess, you know, maybe just he's got a source that he used and it had a different, just a different number I mean, so I'd be really interested to see, like, uh, to know, like, what are the attempted murders? What do they mean? Did Because we haven't, as I said, we haven't seen the court transcripts. He might have been, had 11 people he tried to murder who got away. We don't yeah. know. Um, no, and he wouldn't. Um, in the interview they did with um, to catch uh, in the prison in Ukraine, he didn't talk. He wouldn't talk about the numbers, would he? When he asked him about, yeah, the presenter asked him about um, how it, many. Was he it killed. like, oh, if you think I if did you that, think or I, they, yeah. they said that, and it's yeah, like so he vague. He wouldn't commit to anything, so we just don't know. Yeah, I mean, he fucking hell, he, was, he, he had like about an, a year to live at that point, and he could have just. For the lo- for the sake of the, his victims, even if he didn't give a fuck about them, yeah, but if he would have got the media attention, narcissistic psychopath, he needs to control. But if the you're a narcissistic far psychopath, then say you're going to do it. You need uh, someone to come along, so you're going to go through all the killings and tell everyone where the bodies are. Finding a hundred bodies, or at least finding evidence of even another ten, would get him world renowned. Maybe if he was sick, he would have done it. Yeah, but maybe he wasn't ill and he just had a heart attack, so he never had a chance. I mean, I wonder if if he was ill and he had a long illness, he would have yeah. actually kind of. Then taking that time before he died to control the narrative for that amount of time and go, like, I'm going to do this, mm. I'm going to do that, start demanding things, working with an author, but, um, a journalist. For a nice ending to all this, oh, a on. nicer ending than the death. Yes. A nicer ending. Okay. Um, his wife, Elena, she loved him. She yeah. loved him. Aww. She loved him. Uh, he died. Yeah. Um, uh, the prison had to give him a burial because no one came. To no one up. came. None of his family None of his came family, to collect the his wife body. Didn't. No one picked up his uh, body. So he was basically just uh, d- yeah. disposed of in he a just... prison g- uh, graveyard. Yeah. Fuck him. Fuck you. Uh, so also proving Elena was not there loving him. No. It was literally I think just... she liked the attention. Yeah. And um, was ho- probably hoping that he she would be a victim. There's that kind of mentality yeah. around it. She's obviously a fucking batshit one. Yeah, she's, um, I think, a, trouble, like a anyone, troubled lady. I get people who become pen pals with people in prison because yeah. it's a kind of, you're doing a kind of community service in a way yes. because you're giving hope to, for, a, for a connection with someone. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's in the air. When you get to the point where you fall in love with someone because they're a serial killer and you go to the prison then end up having sex with them and having a kid. Like when when she was 16 and she, she was 16 and watched that interview, she was exactly the age range of the victims. Yeah. She was a 16 fem- female... Sorry, a 16 year old female. Shouldn't could she could have been like, her. You know, I don't know. Not do that. Just don't do that. Because at that point, like, let's say you did actually say, let's say, for argument's sake, let's say, no, we're looking at this wrong. She actually fell in love with him. And yep. it was kismet. Like, there's 
that, that there's one person in the world that she's undeniably attracted to. And she couldn't explain it. It was the heavens opened and God reached down his hand and went, this old creepy man in this cell <laughs> is the man who wants to chuck his three bottle in erect cock in you. <laughs> now go to prison and do that. And she went, I can't have to. God told me. So she went there and it's all preordained. It's all lovely. Yep. Uh, she basically gets done by a complete mental and she's got baby in her. Gives birth to baby, raises it. He's dead. It's like a little boy. It's there, ten years old. You think she's gonna sit there and go? He's gonna kill people. Shit! Like fuck! I fucked this up. Oh no! Like is it like whether you know whether it's nature, he's, nurture, genetics? He's just like, there, like, like he's he's got his little like action figure and a, and a little knife or something. Well, you got to think of the danger of hanging like, his action men off the curtain <laughs> rails and things. Off his erect penis. Off his erect um, penis after he's had forty eight <laughs> bottles of wine. But then you think that. She, the, the, her mentality of saying this guy was fine, I would have hidden the bodies for him, means that she's yeah. a murder apologist. So she's r- going to raise this kid, teaching him that the dad was actually a great man. Yeah. So which is going to be so looking at the whole That's thing, what causes serial killer, nature, nurture, whatever. No, hundred percent. No, like you're doing it. You're That's m- potentially a lot of mixed messages for that kid, isn't yes. it? But also, I wonder if she's so eager to be wanted and needed and loved that she just. She's she like morphs into the person she needs to be to be with the person she's with. If like, that makes sense. Like Robert Patrick from Terminator Two, where he just changed. Yes, into the, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's all about Terminator in the end. Yeah, the Sperminator. The sperm. Oh, is that his name? Is that the no? That's the her Pukowski name. Sperminator. Yeah. Pukow- Pukow- I'm going to pronounce that right. Well, I think we are at the end of this episode. So please, if you enjoyed what you heard today or any other episodes, uh, look us up on. At Echo and Pod on all of the socials, as all the kids the socials, say. All the Please leave us a lovely five star review on the any the, other social. I don't know on Apple, um, iTunes, Spotify, Spotify, Maybe said Shopify. But that's a different no, that's thing. different on Spotify and iTunes, particularly iTunes. Yeah. And if you didn't like us, still leave five star reviews. Yeah, don't leave us a shit review I though. Mean, you're basically, you're there. If you've got nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. Or lie and or say lie. something nice. And you know what? Actually, you can give us five stars and say you suck. Yeah, but just it. give us five stars and <laughs> say you suck. Like the worst thing you do is give us no stars and say you're the best people ever. Yeah, that's the op- that's terrible. We have got a couple of um uh, really nice reviews that have come out. I yeah, mean, actually, they're really, they're really lovely. Like, um, um, we did get one lovely review from Erin from Fortville. Uh, she said, "Love from America. I adore you both and love the podcast." Love from England. We both adore you. Thank we you so both, much. Thank you. That's absolutely lovely of you. Um, unless, of course, you're actually a catfish. Not an actual catfish. Not like from the sea. Not, not like that. I'm talking about you're actually not Aaron. You're a guy called Eric. And you're sitting there going... Uh, uh, I don't know. I still adore him. No, I would. Just say your real just, name. Just be, yeah. uh, but no, Aaron, thank, thank you, Aaron. That's wonderful. It's really lovely. And um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. We got a um, lovely one uh, from uh, Ryan from the Clive Barker podcast. Um so it's a great podcast about difficult subjects. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm basically bigging ourselves up by reading our own reviews out now. I mean, it's, But it's nice. You. It makes us feel special. Yeah. I mean, we're not used to this kind of thing. We expected when we uh, released any of our episodes that basically it would be Chris's parents and my girlfriend listening to it. That's it. Yeah. Um, but we've got hundreds of listeners across the world, and we absolutely adore you all. We're sorry if we offend you ever, but we ain't going to change. I've been Chris. I've been Christian. And this has been Echo One. True uh, crime podcast. And once more, this episode was about. <laughs> <laughs>